Welcome down to the Multi Man Cave. I'm your host, Keith. And I'm Dave. Tonight we're reviewing something a little funky, but it's not from Campbelltown. All right, so we're back. And as I said, tonight we're reviewing something a little funky, yeah. but it's not from Campbelltown. Not. But before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out and dedicate this video to Whiskey Stream Phi, and his real name is Tony Vertan, and he recently became a patron Thanks, of Tony. ours. We really appreciate um, your generosity and supporting the channel um, and all of our Patreons. It, you know, it helps us buy the whiskey. Whiskey ain't cheap. You know, we're not monetized yet. We're not... We. we We've lost probably, I've lost, you know, I'm like, I'm probably about $15,000 in the hole. Every like, time we, we a Patreon subscribes, <laughs> an angel gets its wings. We definitely don't make money on this channel. Maybe one day, but right now we don't. So we really appreciate you guys that support us. Thank you so and, much. And really appreciate you guys that just watch, like, and, and watch yeah. our videos too. So again, Tony, appreciate it, man. Really appreciate your generosity. So... This Ben Nevis is in your honor. So tonight, we're doing Ben Nevis 10. Ben, such a good name. Do you remember, have you had a Ben Nevis yet? I'm trying to think back if we've done a Ben Nevis together. Mm, nope. So Ben Nevis well, ben is kind of known amongst the, the, the true whiskey connoisseurs. It's kind of one of those hidden gems, kind of like, you know, that connoisseurs pine after, like Klein Leash. Spring Bank, uh, Broras, Port Allen's. Ben, I'm, I'm obviously Broar and Port Allen's is quite a bit more because they're closed facilities. But this is kind of you know not a lot of people know about Ben Nevis, and there is it is really really special and really complex for only being ten years old. It's not really expensive. Um, so without further ado, wait, how old is it? Ten years old. It's ten years old. So nice. Ben Nevis ten comes. When in, does that usually sell for on the shelf? I think 50, 60 bucks. Nice. Depending on where you're at, it could be up to 70, it could be down to 40. Uh, in UK, they probably, out of my price like, range. they probably get it like 30, 35 quid over there in the UK. Ooh, maybe even cheaper. Same quid. Um, comes in at 46% ABV, a little bit of whiskey geekery. Um, yeah. I got a lot of info about this. So there is actually typically a little bit of peat. A lot of times it's just a low PPM level, but yeah. sometimes you get up to as high as 30 to 35 PPMs. They use Dunnage Warehouse. I believe they have five Dunnage Warehouse or something like that, and then one Rick House. Other very distinct thing about Ben Nevis is a lot of distilleries use distiller's yeast in the fermentation process, but Ben Nevis, which is owned by Nika now, a Japanese company, um, they actually use a brewer's yeast, which, if, you know, the yield and like... The, what is, what's you get the a lot, yeah. it's less efficient, but a lot of people think that it actually brings out the fruity esters more. And I will say, I taste something different. For 10 years old, this has a lot more going on than most 10-year-olds. So I think I would agree with that. I think I've had maybe one other whiskey that had brewer's yeast other than, yeah, but anyway. One of my favorite whiskeys of all time was a Ben Nevis, like 23-year-old, like independent bottling in like the most quality old school, like wet first fill sherry cast that... Um, my cousin Jonathan Mead Mule let me have it. it, it I, I dream about that whiskey. It, mm. it was so incredible. I think I remember you talking about that one. Old school Ben Nevis that it's aged properly in quality sherry cask is to die for. Um, anything else I want to say about this? Um, I think it's just uh, distilled. I think it's matured mostly in bourbon, but I think there's a, a small amount of sherry cask in this. So mm -hmm. if we can find the exact information, we'll put it there. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about this before we get into it? Let's dive in. Ooh, talking dirty to me with now that pork pop. Mm. Oh, trying to give myself just a little bit yeah, dude, more you, of that sock. Yeah. Stop, <laughs> stop with that. All right, so I'm gonna go first. Mm. I get white raisins and the most unique, I get damp autumn leaves. And it's pleasant. I, you wouldn't think that that would be good. Just damp. Rolling in those leaves. Autumn leaves. It's like so, This is one of the most syrupy, umami. It does have that. It's it's like Lagavulin, like chicken noodle broth. Except for instead of being more brothy, it leans more like apple, 
like syrupy, like apples, pears. Mm -hmm. Bitter Pinot Grigio white wine. The slightest hint of milk chocolate. So there might be, you know, like I said, I think it's mostly bourbon, but there might be a little bit of sherry in there. Mm. I'm not 100% sure. I like, you know, scoured the internet and I could not find it. I think I found one that said mostly bourbon, but some somebody sherry, but... know. Pickle, like the slightest, barely there. There's like a little dill pickle. I'm with you on that. A little bit of dill. Man, that, the syrupy apples and pears, like juice. A little black licorice. There is a bitterness, and I think I shared this with some people, and they they weren't digging it. But I I don't know. I I really enjoy it. I don't. The lightest bit of orange, like tangerines or orange. A little bit of sweetness, like white chocolate frosting. I mean, there's just, this is like well, truly should. one of the most complex 10-year-olds I've ever had. Um, I'm not saying it's the best whiskey I've had, but it's just complex. There's just so much going on. Whether that's good or not remains to be seen. Somebody cut out that little clip of Keith saying, this is one of the most complex 10-year-olds I've ever had. <laughs> um, raspberry syrup, not like super strong, like just slice in a raspberry syrup. Maybe a little soot, a little herbal. And even a little bit of peanuts, oddly enough, at the end. Uh, what about you? Like, what do you get on the nose? You just took me on a journey. Of <laughs> scent. Do you agree with any of those? Oh yeah, I'm with you on a lot of those, man. The dill pickle, I'm, I'm, a lot of them. So for me, I'm like trying. I like struggled to figure out what it is that it's reminding me of, and then uh, Keith, uh, that definitely helps when. Because dill was one of those things. The other thing was, is you said umami, and I definitely got some, like, teriyaki on something the... Something savory? Yeah, something, some meatiness to it, something. But, like, once again, the reason teriyaki, because it is so funky. Um, it also, it reminds me a lot of uh, Corona and Lime, no pun intended. Um, yeah, which might be, like, a the citrusy, brewery, lemon lime. Like, but it also could be, like, the, I don't know, maybe the beer... Well, it see. said that, that, you know, brewer's yeast tends to bring out, like when they so do research, wondering. it brings That's out more the fruity ester. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this, so this is an orchard fruit basket. So the next one was citrus, uh, citrus all over for me on it. I was like trying to, it was, I was like, it's like, it's pineapple. No, that's a weird pineapple. Weird, weird pineapple, but it's pineapple. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like to me, underripe pineapple. Yeah. Like yeah. Just, too close to like, just, just strange. You know, like if when you get a real pineapple and it's yeah. like, you don't cut up. Yeah, 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 yeah. the core, the core. core quite as much. It's yeah. like almost like a little. The heart, the. It's not heart quite of, as sweet, yeah. a little too. Yeah. And then um, on that kind of that umami, that uh, what I, chicken noodle soup, but that kind of was just that broth aspect of it. It's like there for a second and then the fruitiness takes over. Yep, yep. Um, and then a little bit. I get a little bit of formaldehyde, but that just might be me trying to explain the funkiness that is on this. And then uh, some, I didn't know, lead or pencil shavings. I didn't know if it was the wood shavings or the, the pencil, the the carbon that's that's mixed with it. Yeah, um, I can go there with you. I got a little bit of that. And then the, the last one was... Uh, the pineapple was really starting to, now that you say it. It's just weird pineapple. there. Um, the last one was, it reminds me of cleaning out the grass clippings that get stuck and caked underneath the lawnmower and the chunks of it. Like yeah. Just the wet, then you pull it off and it's wet underneath and kind of along with your uh, your leaves. Who's copying who now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you. <laughs> Always me. Anyways, how about on the old juicer? All right. On the lips. How's that taste? Again, the damp autumn leaves is not quite there as much, but it's, it's there a little bit, but it's not in a bad way. Mm. Obviously, it's like apple juice, pear juice, syrupy, like slight tinge of raspberry syrup, that kind of umami, like brothy, but then it quickly goes back into the fruit syrup. Take mm. a second. A 
bitter Pinot Grigio again. Mm -hmm. There is that like black licorice again, but on this one, I get a little bit more like black tea and honey on the palate that I didn't get on the nose. Mm -hmm. And then you ever met like the- It's much old... sweeter on the, the palate yeah. than the nose. The nose doesn't really have much sweetness to it. I think so. Yeah. I agree, it's sweeter on it's the palate. Citrusy. It's citrusy, it's a different, it's not a, like I got, well, I guess you did get milk chocolate, which is a pretty sweet. It was, the, just so everyone knows, the milk chocolate was barely, but this is nothing like a Glendronic, yeah. you know, chocolatey, like Sherry Bomb chocolate. Yeah. Just like the slightest hint for a second. Almost more like white chocolate, probably, if you're going to go somewhere with chocolatiness. Anything else? Um, old timer, like Cracker Barrel, like lemon, you know, like the lemon candies yeah. that have like a little bit of the powdered sugar on it? Yeah. Lemon head powdered, like with powder. Not lemon heads the candy, but the old timer right. lemon yeah. drops. Lemon drops. They have the powdered sugar yeah. on it. A little bit of orange again. And then there is that herbal. There's something bitter about it. And I think some people, Mike and Dustin, did not enjoy this as much as I did. And I just don't think they like that bitter, kind of bitter Pinot Grigio. I think it you know, Chardonnay type. I really enjoy it. And I don't know, it was, it's not for everybody, but. You can't enjoy the sweet as much without the sour. Yeah. Um, you? So for me, I thought it was like that, it's that weird pineapple again, but it's concentrate pineapple weird like juice. Pineapple, here you go. Like a pineapple juice, um, definitely. But then you like put some salt and pepper into it for me. Um, there's a little bit of peppery, a little bit of salt on it for me. Um, I also wrote lime. There is some pepper in there, salt and yeah. pepper. Yeah, I don't know what. It... And then uh, oatmeal raisin. Um, the the oatmeal, kind of that bready umami, whatever that is. And then the raisins, the the dark fruit, probably from the I'm sherry. I'm just getting a little like like a margarita with like the salt on the rim, like the lemon citrusy. Dude, I said, li yeah, limeade. Um, so margarita is definitely there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A little salt on the rim. Oh, I'm telling you, this is a very complex balance. I was all there's over the place. Sweet, there's like some funk. I just, there's a funky like Campbelltown, like that Lagavulin brothiness, umami, bitter Pinot Grigio, like the slight, not, it's nowhere near funky, like yeah. spring bake, but there's something a little, he said, the first thing he said was, this is a little funky. This is funky. Um, so in one breath, I, sw I smell a little bit of formaldehyde on it, but then also strawberry rhubarb on the, the um, uh, palate for me, and then also some burnt marshmallow. Mm -hmm. um, so some of that sweetness really comes out on the palate, I feel like. And what you said, that sootiness is probably a better way to explain it. I was trying to explain, like, it's like a burnt sweet. I didn't know how to explain it, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. So the finish for me, it's not like the longest. It's a very, for 46% 10 year old whiskey, it hangs around for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's got, it's kind of like that powdered, the lemon drop powdered sugar mixed with like bitter Pinot Grigio, salt and pepper with a salt, salt and pepper, <laughs> salt, salt and pepper with a little, uh, mm. where will I go with that? Dude, I think it's like a salt and pepper, uh, vinegar chip or something like that. Uh, there's something sour. Yeah, kind that, of vinegary. But yeah, maybe that, that's why it's kind of funky, like spring bank a little bit. Yeah. Um. Pretty impressive to me for a ten year old. Yeah. So I think it's it's probably like you said. See, aspects of it I feel like go a little longer than like a traditional medium, but as far as the body goes, it dies out right yeah. in the middle. There's some parts of it like I feel like the 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 lemon head residue. The sootiness is still there. A little bit of the pepper even, I feel. Um, man, pretty good. So medium to long for me finish. Um, a lot of those same notes from the from the palette. So what are you going to give this out of 100? Malta Man Cave Mark, what are you going to give this? It's definitely approved. Um, it is such a strange <laughs> brew. This witch is, is a strange witch's brew. It is a strange witch's brew. Not for everyone, I would probably uh, say. No, but and I, I didn't think this would probably be one of your favorites. No, no. So it's not one of my favorites, but I am so appreciative of it. I think it, I think you should always, if you're going out for the night, 
have two that two drinks that you like and pick one that's something out of your comfort zone. I don't know. Three drinks, that's probably a lot. Maybe one and one. Who knows? Such a lightweight nowadays. So politically correct, Dave. So just watch what are you gonna get for those triggered audience members who <laughs> dislike my bourbon reviews. Oh my snowflake friend. Stop like stop disliking. I see your dislikes on the bourbon <laughs> reviews. Whoever you are. Alright, so out of a hundred. What are you gonna go? I'm putting me on the spot. It's in it's in it's an eighty-five. <laughs> I figured this wouldn't be for so yeah. for me this is an eighty-eight. Almost an 89. This is one of my, this is one of the most complex. It's not like this, like sweet, like it's not an easy drinking whiskey. And this is not for the faint of heart. This is not for someone that hasn't been in whiskey for a while. I don't think I would never give this to somebody that was like new to whiskey, but for you, whiskey kind of sweet. Hey, hey, Hal, try this delicious yeah. <laughs> funky. <laughs> <laughs> dill pickle and dill pickle chicken noodle broth mixed with mm, syrupy shades. raspberry extract <laughs> and a little bit of yeah so this is not for this this is for the whiskey geeks um for an affordable lower end like 46 percent abv i imagine it's non show filtered natural color um i do not know natural color for sure i'll put that right if i can find it um it looks it, it looks pretty faint 80, so yeah, 88 out of 100, um, almost an 89, kind of 88.5. Nice, I like it. Hey, decimal points, introducing the decimal points. Question of the night. Oh, okay, so we were thinking about keeping it kind of in the same vein of last week. Um, just kind of asking uh, Keith as far as his thoughts on the uh, whiskey industry and uh, what... Uh, Maybe what my opinions of it is as well, but you won't care about that. <laughs> um, so this question this week, I wanted to know, um, there are some very popular and well-established whiskeys out there that nobody messes with and a lot of people give ho-hum reviews about and maybe a lot of people are on the uh, on the bandwagon because of the hype train. I remember when those Johnny Walker commercials came out. I'm like, Johnny Walker's the best. <laughs> you would. Yeah. Well, it was like, I was like crying from, from the brother commercial. Do you remember that thing? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. But pay that marketing company. Anyways, what's your opinion on... What are some what are some labels or some expressions? Something that there is it's a hype beast or it's a well established um, one that you want to take down a couple pegs. Initial, you know, I think of Dalmore. Oh, oh Dalmore, no more. I've already dogged Dalmore no, so yeah. much. Yeah, you know what? So. Funny thing, we talked about McCallum. I remember I actually saved that. You gave me like three and I actually, yeah, yeah. I, I knocked off Talisker instead of McCallum. But I will say this, we were, I was talking with uh, like a group text with Dustin and Mike from Mike's Whiskey Reviews and they were saying like McCallum 18, they're asking like 350 something on Whiskey World or something like that. And it's just ridiculous. And I, and I was saying that there's a lot of people in Asia, I think that maybe don't, aren't whiskey geeks as much and they just buy it for the name and i was like man if they weren't doing that it would just sit there on the shelves like it should and mccallan would learn their lesson now mccallan has the ability of being some of the best whiskey in the world if they did it like the old school way like they did in the old days and the 60s 70s 80s it's amazing but i am sick of what they're doing like the prices for what it is is just outrageous right now it is yeah. not worth that so that is my hot take. I am sick of McAllen. Three hundred fifty for the eighteen-year-old? Absolutely not. What would that approach? Asians okay, and so here's the stop hot. buying it and letting them think that they are okay and getting away with here's it. Here's the now. There's plenty of Americans too that are buying. Here's the hot take. What should the eighteen be listed at appropriately? I think it. I mean, it's a good whiskey, but it's not. Is it a is it a Ben Nevis? Is it a fifty dollar? <laughs> no, it's more, it's worth more than that. Okay, I mean, it's pretty decent. Cherry okay, glass. um, I I think, I mean, and I'm even giving letting them factor in, you know, the name brand recognition. 
you know, 160 bucks. Okay, so so right now it's about double. So right now it's I want I'd rather pay 144, but you know. So, so right now it's trending about twice of what it, what the true market twice value the is. Twice the triple what it really should yeah. be. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you guys as always for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Yeah. If you want to support the channel, please. You know, become Patreons. Yeah. Remember, Scotch is king. Bourbon is best. Stop disliking my reviews. <laughs>